before COVID, vaccines, social distancing, cancer, and death, there was a beginning. Before monarch butterflies, tomatoes, waterfalls, or the human eye, there was a beginning. Before baseball or hockey, liberal or conservative, trees and flowers or big bangs, there was a beginning. Before time began, A.D. or B.C., human love, work, holidays, sleep, or cottages, there was a beginning. Before anxiety or mental health, meaning and purpose, before written languages, books, and the internet, there was a beginning. Genesis, the Greek word for origin or source, the title of the first book of the Bible, gets its name from the opening few words, in the beginning. In the beginning, God. The origin or source of the life the Bible teaches is God. The treasure of the Bible as revealed in Genesis is we are invited to go back to the beginning in faith to meet the source of life, God. Now, we are limited in our understanding because in the beginning, we obviously weren't there. We have to trust the testimony of people long ago that the words they describe here in Genesis testify that in the beginning, God wants all of us to know that God existed. So what's the significance of this truth? First, God was always present. Unlike human beings, God is without beginning, outside of the limitations of time and without equal among any other beings. John 1 shares how Jesus was present with God before creation as well. In the beginning, it says, was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. He was with God in the beginning. The Son of God was transcendent over time, eternal with God. Later in verse 14, John describes the significance of Jesus actually coming to earth by stating, The Word became flesh and made His dwelling among us. We have seen His glory, the glory of the one and only who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. At the essence of of the universe is the eternal God whom we can now know through Jesus Christ. When we know Jesus, we know God, and we participate in an eternal, transcendent God. Jesus later prays this prayer to God the Father in John 17, verses 2 and 3. He says, For you have granted the Son authority over all people that he might give eternal life to all those you have given him. Now this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. God's perspective on your life and mine is eternal. Our perspective, of course, is so limited by the limitations of time. I don't know about you, but my thoughts are right now are so weak. I am now trying to find, figure out how to live in this new COVID world. It's tiring. Thoughts of what to do, where to go, school, anxieties over loved ones, wondering when the end will come. Please have a vaccine. Who to trust? Will I be deserted with everyone looking out for themselves? I feel stuck in this never-ending weakness of limitations of to aging body, being not smart enough or quick and witted enough to handle daily life right now. That is why we today are gathering as weak people. Not all together, uncertain about the future, because we need today to lay down once again our burdens. We need to stop trying to understand everything. 
And we need to worship the in the beginning God. Our worship of God takes our eyes off our own limitations and focuses our hearts on someone who helps us transcend time through the God who is eternal. Genesis 1-2 has this wonderful verse, it's kind of a metaphor picture that the earth was formless and empty, darkness over the surface of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. Now, I love that metaphor of God hovering over the waters. The waters in the ancient world symbolized the chaos and the wild, uncontrolled realities of the world. God hovers over the chaos. The waters of chaos have no impact on God as God hovers above them. The eternal God who created the heavens and the earth, speaks into the formless and emptiness. And what does he speak? Life. The eternal God speaks life into our chaos. Bruce Waltke states that since everything exists by the word of God, we must not think of creation independently of God. The word of God is the creative and binding force of life. Life. Peter, an early follower of Jesus, followed Jesus by saying to him, Jesus, you have the words of life. During these times of uncertainty, our hearts need to cling to the God of life who speaks to us in our chaos. Take the focus off yourself. Stop trying to be so strong and figuring everything out. And in your situation, focus on the eternal God of eternal life who hovers over all the chaos of this world. Lord God, breathe new life into our weary souls we yearn. Colossians 1, 17, Paul reminds us that Jesus was before all things, and in him all things hold together. A new beginning is coming. An eternity without pain and no more death. Only the eternal God who hovers over the earth is able to breathe new life into us for a new beginning. Trust in the eternal God in your life for in all our beginnings, God.